you want to spot every player in a cycle frontier well friends my name is rengar welcome to the cycle settings guide let's jump right in so a question i always get is how i make my game so vibrant now we're going to get into this later in this guide we're going to talk about how to make your game run super smooth so you can get the maximum amount of fps which is really important to make sure that you're hitting those flicks and just wiping out players you need the game to run good so it can feel good on top of that, we're going to talk about how to make the game vibrant and look good, if that's what you like. There are two different methods of doing this, and we'll hop into both of those. And then on top of that, we will talk about how to make the game look better for your stream, if you are a streamer. I get that question a lot as well. So guys, I hope you enjoy, and let us jump right into the video. So I want to start off with how to boost your FPS, and then I want to hop into the ideal in-game settings. We'll talk about like color settings and vibrance and all that. So starting off, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, I want to show you how to maximize your FPS in every game and not just this one. So to start off, all you have to do is right click on your desktop and go to NVIDIA control panel. So open that bad boy up, wait for it to load, and what you're going to do is go to manage 3D settings. Now in here, there are two main settings that we are looking for. So number one will be low latency mode. I would turn this on either on or ultra. Now you'll have to test uh what feels better for you but kind of what low latency mode will do is whenever like you're playing a game and it feels choppy right low latency mode kind of helps like free that up especially if you're somebody who streams on a single pc setup or sometimes even just having like discord and youtube open and playing a game will lag your pc up when you're doing multiple things and it really is just eating away at your pc um low latency mode will really really help for me on my 2060 super I saw a huge improvement on just regular on, not ultra, but on my 3070 Ti, I saw a huge improvement on ultra. So definitely just like check it out, see what feels good, like stress test it a little bit and check that out. But on is a good place to start and you can see if you can go to ultra as well. But this will just make overall the game kind of feel good, even if like you aren't getting more frames. Now, scrolling down, the next thing you have to do is power management mode. By default, this is on normal. So when it's on normal, what happens is your GPU says, I want to be as powerful as I can, but I'm also want to save as much power as I can. So instead of your GPU putting output over here, it's doing like this so it can save power, right? So it's balancing power performance. But if you put prefer max performance, it will use as much power as it possibly can to put out the maximum amount of output, which is really good if you're on a desktop because you're plugged into an outlet, right? We don't care how much power you use. We're on a laptop. So definitely make sure you have that on. They are not on by default, and they will really help you maximize your frames. Let us hop into in-game settings, then we'll talk color, and we'll talk streams. So jumping right into the settings, all you have to do to access the settings is press escape, go to settings, and then you'll be in the options where you can change stuff. Now, a little disclaimer is in the tutorial, it seems you kind of always stutter. So to get the best gauge of what your settings actually will do and what they are, uh, and what you need, you should go into a game at like with nothing on and just tune them in there. I think that's the best place to do that. Now, starting off, the game has really good auto detect options. I would definitely mess with having this on. I've tried it both uh, with it on and messing with it off. It feels like they tune it really well, but I also kind of like the way the game looks on low with like everything off, like even like draw distance low isn't that big of a deal. Like, I don't really notice any difference between, like, low and epic, so this is something to look at. If you're trying to maximize FPS, I would just go everything low, but, like, this kind of auto, like, tunes, like, really good graphics with having, you know, a good look to it as well. Now, um, when it comes to DLSS, this is something that you would use if you have a 20 or a 30 series card, and what this does pretty much is, like, it'll boost your performance by, like, artificially creating frames, um... It's like a weird way to go into it. You can look up more of this online and how it works. But the only thing I would say is don't use ultra quality. I saw a massive frame boost when I put it on quality, but I had massive stuttering on ultra quality. So I'd recommend trying either quality or maybe balanced, but I think quality was the overall best fit for me and a lot of people as well. So quality is definitely the move. Um, scrolling down, I don't use any colorblind settings. A lot of people think I do. Uh, they ask about the vibrance. I don't use that. I use something else to change the vibrance for my game. So later on, you, if you can, if you're colorblind, you can use this, or you can try messing with this if you want. But I, I don't use this at all. Um, scrolling down, I would turn VSync off 
if you are on a monitor that is uh, above 60 hertz, uh, just go for it. It's a way better option. Show FPS, you can have on if you want to see FPS in the top right. Um, the multi-threaded rendering. I saw a massive frame boost from using this. And the only two things I would say is motion blur, turn that off. It is so bad to have motion blur for when you're flicking, you can't see anything. It's not even really a like, uh, it's not a frame thing. It just looks terrible. So don't do that. And if you're a streamer, turn off image sharpening. Sharpening is really bad for your encoder, especially like if you're coming from a game like Tarkov where your game is force sharpened. It makes the game look so bad on YouTube and Twitch. So keep sharpening to a minimal in any game you play if you want the maximum quality boost. Let us hop into Vibrance and then we'll talk about how to make it look good on your stream. Now, I want to talk about my preferred method to actually get my colors so vibrant and i'll explain both methods i think this is the one that i use is superior but we'll talk about both so you go back into your video control panel which is on your desktop right click the video control panel and you're going to go to uh adjust desktop color settings now in here you're going to pick the monitor that your game goes on and what you're doing is you're actually changing the colors on the monitor itself so instead of changing um Instead of changing like my game, I'm changing my monitor, so all my games are this vibrant. So what I'm doing here is I'm boosting my brightness. I'm boosting my gamma, and what gamma does is it kind of like whitens up the game a little bit, which means that in dark areas, I can see better. I think boosting in gamma through NVIDIA control panel gives you a lot more like, uh, a lot more control over how much you want the game actually brightened. And it's really nice too in the game, because I think higher gamma makes the glints easier to see. So I definitely would recommend using Gamma either in the game or that as well. And then the main color component that I do is Digital Vibrance. So as you see, if I slide the bar down, you can watch my screen lose color. See on the desktop, it loses color until it goes black and white. So normally the game's at 50. You see how like dull my desktop is? But if I pull it up to 90, this is like what I prefer. Do you see how vibrant the colors begin to get? This is really like where I like my colors where they pop for me. And when the colors pop a person that walks into your screen that is a dark outline will really show from the background so you can really catch pixels of people as you're running by and like wait that's out of place i can shoot that so that really helps you a lot i recommend doing it this way now unless you do dual pc like i do you're not going to have this show up on your stream i'll get into how to make it show up on your stream later but let me hop into the second method of doing this so the other way to do this, and this will show up on stream, again, I'll check to the other one on stream later if you are a streamer, but the other method, which I think is far worse because it actually tanks your FPS. Doing it through your monitor actually tanks no FPS at all. It just adjusts the hue of the colors that get sent to your monitor when it projects, but if you do filters, it has to re-render the frames with the filters. It's a very bad way of doing it in my opinion, but you can do it if you don't want to change your whole monitor colors, if you want to change the game color. So what you would do is while in game, press Alt F3, not F4 because that'll close your game. Alt F3 will bring up game filters. And what you would do is you can have three different presets. So you select one, right? And what you can do is add different filters. So the two that I would use is brightness and contrast. So what you can do with this is like change the exposure. So that would like pretty much be your gamma, right? Your contrast would kind of be like how uh, bright it is. So we have gamma here, brightness, and then highlights kind of uh, mess with like, I guess the little bit of lighting. You see how the shadows kind of fade in and out more the more we do this. And yeah, so this is pretty much your brightness scale. So this is where you would like fuck with stuff. This is also more gamma. So you can mess with this, to, like what looks good to you. You have to test it because I don't have your monitor. It's gonna look different for everyone's monitor and you have to test it, but this is gonna be for your brightness to make everything look good. And then for color is where you're actually gonna go to change the way your game looks on screen. Now, uh, when you're coming into color, so tint color kind of adjusts like whether you're gonna go from like a pink shift to like a blue shift, maybe a green shift, and then it's gonna go to an orange shift, right? And same thing with the intensity. So like I could have it like a more like whitish blue, and then I, if I do the intensity, so you get darker and darker, or um, and then you can do temperature. So temperature would be like one way is orange and one way is blue. So if I like th this intensity, but I kind of want it more orange, I could tint the orange out more or I could tint the blue in more. Like you control the way it goes in the vibrance as well would make all the colors pop at the same time. So this is a way that you can do it in game. And if you ever want them off, you hit the off button and then you can go back to your preset whenever you want. But this is a viable way to change your colors for only this game. And it will appear on stream. 
but I personally I hate this because it tanks my FPS like 10 to 20 and not every game allows you to do this so I prefer doing it through the control panel because it doesn't tank FPS and overall it's just really good let's hop into how to make it look good on stream and then that'll be it guys so if you're a streamer and you want to make your game look good and you're using that uh, NVIDIA control panel like I do, if you stream off one PC, you would have to do an extra step to make the colors actually transfer to your um, your OBS. Now, this isn't the OBS that I use. Uh, I stream off dual PC, so I, my OBS does not run off my game PC. But to add these uh, these colors to your, your game, what you'd have to do is go to your game capture and click the filters button right here or right click and go to filters now when you're here you would hit the add button and you would go to color correction now this gives you the similar list of options like we had and this allows you to adjust the brightness of it um you can also adjust um the saturation as well so what i do in mine is i adjust the gamma just a touch to like point i think like 0.15 maybe and then on top of that I do the saturation to 0.41. Sometimes you can go to like 0.5 or 0.7, like whatever you like. Obviously, like it gets really intense, it doesn't look very good. But you can see it change inside of the OBS, but not in my game. Notice how on the bottom left, my game doesn't really change. So it won't pick up my monitor colors, but it will pick up like the in-game. I'd stick with like maybe like a 0.3 or 0.4, mess with it. But if you do test this, make sure your OBS is on your other monitor that isn't tinted because um. Once you have changed the colors through the digital vibrance, right, and you put it on your main monitor, you're going to have it double boosted, right? So it'll be a 30% increase and a 90% increase on the same monitor, and you don't, like, want that, right? So whenever I'm looking at my OBS, I'd pull it to my second monitor to check for the colors because my second monitor is how it would look to my viewer, right? So I, that's what you have to look into. But, yes, use color correction filters. I used, like, a 0.13 gamma and a 0.43 saturation. That's what works for me, but again, mess with it. See what looks good for your stream. If, if the game's too dark on your stream, uh, up the gamma. If it's too bright, lower the gamma, lower the brightness a little bit. If it's too too much one color, drop the saturation. But that should help you get those effects on a stream. And again, if you use the game filters, you don't have to do this for your OBS. But if you use the control panel and you're on one PC stream, you do have to do that. Guys, that was the guide. I hope you enjoy having your game more colorful and helping uh, having it help you spot more players. Uh, I'm doing daily guides here on my channel. Definitely make sure you're checking it out. New guides every day. And we do have that dev interview that I did recently. I'm going to link that at the end of the video. Hopefully you guys enjoy and I'll see you next time.